clapping and 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 somebody give the Lord a shout! Amen. Welcome to Destiny 2018. We have been waiting for this day, about a hundred days before today. We started planning and trying to do all that by the grace of God uh, we have done to start tonight. Um, this is our 30th anniversary. Um, it's the beginning of our 31st year and our fourth decade. Um, all kinds of wishes uh, have come our way and we are grateful and we return praise to God for what he has done because really it's him. Uh, he alone has done everything and we all seated here and a larger number watching live on the various platforms that we are streaming on. I think we've all together done this, participating and cooperating with God. The theme for this convention, as the Lord put it in our heart, is spirit. It's one word. Um, can see it um, in various colors, various forms. And over the next four nights, including tonight, um, that theme will be unraveled. Um, in preaching, in teaching, and in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit himself. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Uh, we are grateful for everybody who is here. Um, I'm going to tell you how the service will go tonight, and then we will look forward to tomorrow. The first thing I want to say is that every night there is a bus. I believe it's a 46-seater, so don't be in a hurry to go home. Uh, the bus will take you from here through the traffic lights all the way to Westfield and then you can um, continue on your journey. Um, also, um, we have ministers with us who are our friends who I will talk about when I come up. Let me say um, quickly that we are all welcome. I'll do some formal welcomes when I come up again. But this is the order for tonight um, apart from where the Lord has brought us to uh, we will continue um, with as a young man I love so much and you love him when he begins to sing um, because what I love about him and his mother especially his mom um, is that they have defied what would ordinarily be the odds in life and made sure that the best of his potential comes out. Um, he has two CDs to his name. I don't have one yet, and um, you don't also have one yet. Those of you watching don't have one. He has two CDs to his name, and Javan Coker is coming from the United Kingdom. He will be ministering um, after I finish, and then following that, we are going to take two greetings um, from two special people. Each night, we will be taking two greetings. This is 30 years, so we want to take our time and just celebrate that. So much uh, to talk about. We can catch up with the congratulations and the best wishes that are on social media because 30 years is quite some time uh, to be running and to be running good. So after Javan finishes, we will take Greetings. I call him my boss, uh, Pastor Chinedu. Pastor Chinedu Merubelo, he is the chair of the evangelical churches in the Gambia. And um, he's also um, a resident missionary here. He's been here um, almost as long as the church has been around. Uh, he's a friend, he's a brother. He's here with his wife, Elizabeth. He will be bringing us fraternal greetings. And then we will also take greetings from Reverend James Ed from the UK, from River of Life City Church. Uh, we know him as Pastor James. Pastor James has been a speaker here. Um, he spoke last year also 
and he's a good friend of the church. So after Javan, there is Pastor Chinedu, Pastor James. They have about two, three minutes each. And after that, our choir, Sweet Perfume, will come, during which we will take our first offering. After Sweet Perfume is done, Minister Grace Uwareme coming all the way from Port Harcourt, the garden city of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 180 million strong black people. She's coming from that country and she's going to bless us tremendously. Uh, after Grace uh, ministers, then Mrs. Mary Gomez will bless us tremendously. And after Mary, Mary blesses us, uh, Minister Jerry Omole from Lagos, Nigeria will fill the house with the saxophone and then I will come up again and then I will do all my protocol greetings because we have dignitaries here, VIPs, VVIPs, and all of you, the PIPs, we are all here. And amen. So i like us to, um, I think that's Jerry. All right, Jerry is here. So let me do two things before um, Jerry ministers. Um, Francis, if you can give me that brown envelope on the floor there. And there are two special things I want to do. The first thing is um, on Sunday, when we finished our service, um, I was greeted by somebody who I did not recognize until he told me his name. And when he told me his name, I sprang on him. We hugged each other because it is his group that came here in 1978 first and a smaller group in 79 and in 79, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Next year will be 40 years that I've been working with the Lord. Please help me celebrate Brother Albert Seth Okran. And he's here with two other great men of God. And I want him to come up and just say something. Pastor Albert, just come and say something to us. And after that, I will do the second thing. He's like my father in the Lord. Um, he blew trumpets all over and while I was in university one day we went on a crusade in a city called Maiduguri in northern Nigeria and we were told there was a group ministering before our group and the group was called Joyful Way and I said it cannot be possible and there he was blowing the trumpet and here he was almost 40 years now just greet us sir, and say something God bless you Hallelujah to God be the glory. God is wonderful. Uh, 78, a group, Joyful Way Incorporated, came to the Gambia for the first time. And I was fortunate to be one of the members of the group. And we came and ministered in various places. And many were touched many were saved unto the Lord. The following year, 1979, a smaller group was chosen to become um, like counselors or follow-up team. And fortunately, like Pastor has said, I was part of the team. And we came and ministered. I remember very well uh, at the end of the service, I think at the Methodist Church, a young man, he was very, he was very short. He was like this. You know, he came to the stage and <laughs> he looked a little bit radical. You know, he was asking so many questions, you know, trying to find out what we're doing, the music. And we got to know that he, he, he's a very talented musician. He could play the organ and all that. And so he introduced himself to us and we welcomed him. And we didn't know what God was doing in the life of this young man. And we left and went back. But I tell you that as I stand here, the seed of mission was sown in my heart in this country. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1979, we went to various places. I was sent to Nemakunku, and I was there with 
uh, sister, and as we stayed in that village, one of the nights, I was sitting there with these two German missionaries from work mission. And the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, look at these two white gentlemen who have left their beautiful country and have come to this village helping these people, ministering to them. I want you to be a missionary. And I said, Lord, I accept. I am a missionary. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I didn't tell them anything. In fact, as at now, they don't even know what their lives had been to me. I committed myself to missions. I spoke to the team members that I am going to be a missionary. I'm going to be a missionary. And by God's grace, 10 years after that, I surrendered my life onto missions. And I went back from Nigeria to Ghana and together with... Uh, Reverend Joseph McCarthy who is here who is also a member of Joffrey Jof Way Incorporated he, 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 he didn't come for the team uh, come with the team to this place but he was praying with us, hallelujah and I went back to Ghana and together we put together a missionary organization called Mission and so as we celebrate Today, I want to tell you that Touchbearers Mission also celebrated our 30th anniversary. We were born on the 8th of September 1988, and you were born on the 5th of November 1988. So we are all 30 years old in mission and in ministry. So we are very happy to come here to celebrate with you. We came also for another purpose. One purpose is that since that time that Joffrey Way came, it is 40 years. And the Lord gave one of these brothers, Reverend um, John Crawford, who has EYO, a vision that we should come to the Gambia and visit 40 towns and villages showing the Jesus movie, doing Jesus marches, planting 40 trees in all the towns and villages to commemorate 40 years of charismatic movement in the Gambia. And this work has been done. Today is the 39th day. Tomorrow will be the 40th day. And 40, 39 towns 39 towns have been visited and trees have been planted Jesus movie has been shown many have committed their lives to the Lord I can't remember the names of the towns Prophet, can you mention some of the names please come and, and do that for me just mention one or two of the names Okay, we have, uh, uh, we've gone to Sarakunda and all those places. But we thank God that God has made it happen. And so we are here to celebrate with you. We are here to celebrate with you. We are happy for what God has done with this ministry. Thank God for your life and we continue to worship with you. God bless 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 you. Thank you. Wow, give him a very befitting God bless you. Amen. The second thing I want to do and um, before um, Javan sings, um, ladies and gentlemen, by the way, Minister Jerry Omoli is in the house. Amen. I, I'm not too sure why what happened on uh, the first is that I didn't recognize um, Albert. Maybe the Lord wanted to do it this way so the whole world will see him and all his friends around the globe will see him. Um, the second thing is that we gave about nine or ten people um, full membership of the church um, in two ways. Some were first timers, others had gone and had come back either through marriage or some, some, some 
thing. And we forgot one person. And that we all felt so bad that we just forgot her. And then I said, well, we'll give her the certificate tonight for the whole world to see. That is the way we will apologize. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mrs. Umi Ongwe Walter. Okay, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping for her. We love her so much. She's doing a PhD in French. She lectures. Wow, two beautiful daughters. I think they have their CD too. Wow. Oh, may God bless you. Now the whole world knows you. So let me put this thing down so I can give you the thing properly. And then you shake my hand and you smile and the whole world can see this. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please let's celebrate Umi as she goes. And let's get ready. Let's welcome Javan Coker after Javan, Pastor Chinedu after Pastor Chinedu, Reverend James after Reverend James, Sweet Perfume, Grace, Mary, Jerry, and Pastor Force. Put your hand together for my good friend Javan. He has his track that he's singing with. I was teasing him that he was going to preach today. All right. It's all yours. Oh, you're using that. Okay. I'll show him some love, Javan Kuka. I told you, I told you, that's Javan. Yes, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it up for Javan, Javan Coca. And let's have Pastor Chinedo. God bless you, Javan. Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Wow, God is good. I want to say to my friend and his wife, Pastor Forbes, um, congratulations. Happy 30th birthday. <laughs> I want to say to the whole abiding world ministries, congratulations. I mean, it's been a beautiful journey. What great things our God has done. How gracious and good he is. You know, you take a step of faith and you'll be surprised at what he, what he would do. And he's really done great things. On behalf of the leadership of the churches and ministries in the EFG, EFG is Evangelical Fellowship of the Gambia, the group that networks Evangelical Ministries in the Gambia, um, we wish to rejoice and felicitate with you and members of the Abiding World Ministries on your 30th anniversary. We appreciate the prophetic flavor Abiding World Ministry brings to our collective witness and our proclamation of the good news. I mean, very clear, very emphatic and gives direction to the nation. We appreciate it and we are grateful to God for that. Your unapologetic declaration of God's mind to our society's conscience has been very visible and clear. And we celebrate it, we appreciate it, and we commend it. However, we believe that 30 symbolizes a new season. And in many ways, your impact has only just begun. We pray that God will renew your strength and increase grace upon you for the new season, which will demand a lot more. On behalf of myself, my wife, our ministry, the entire EFG, we want to say congratulations and God's blessings. We celebrate you. Amen. Well, let's celebrate Reverend James Erin. And thank Pastor Chinedu too. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege and honor to be back here in the Gambia and also to be part of what God is doing in this place. There are some places that 
you go and you don't want to come back to those, those places again. But there are some places you go and you can't wait to come back again. Hallelujah. I believe that God has been awesome to the work in this place. God has been faithful to the work in this place. When you look back as to how God has taken this ministry for the last 30 years, you will understand that the hand of God is in this place. Hallelujah. And today, I bring you greetings from River of Life City Church and to my very good friend, my that we love you so much and we believe that the next double decade, God is going to accelerate this way and cause you to influence every domain, impact every nation, and transform every nation. We pray God's hand upon this way that everything that you set your hands to do as from today will get greater and will increase in all dimensions. God bless you.
You're more real than the ground I stand on. Say you're more real than you're more.
awesome night. Let's celebrate the Lord again for all these people he's ministered. Amen. 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 I think this is my. Can I use this? Evangelist Daniel, uh, we are so glad to have you here with us. And if you are in the audience and you are a pastor, you are a missionary, uh, whatever you do in the ministry, we love you and thank you so much for supporting us. We also want to thank all the contractors and our workers, our church staff uh, for all they have done. Uh, I want to particularly honor and celebrate um, um, one of the ladies who is um, helping. She's the Vice Chair of the Truth, Reconciliation and Reparations Commission and she is a member of the Gambia Transition Brain Trust. Mrs. Adelaide Sosa, we welcome you. Thank you for coming. The ECOWAS Ambassador is with us. We thank you so much for coming. Um, American Government Representative SSR Todd Coker is here. Thank you so much. And all our VIPs, VVIPs, if I've forgotten you, as they normally say, all protocols duly and respectfully observe. Forgive me. Government of the Gambia, we thank you for the relevant ministries that have worked with us um, from foreign affairs to the airport, the police. We want to thank all the major media houses that have um, come on our side and I Africa TV, I Gambia. Uh, we are live on so many platforms. Thank you so much for what you've done. And to you, the gatekeepers, I want to say thank you very much. We have worked so hard. Um, the kids, the youth, uh, past, present, and future members, we say thank you. Our ministry partners, um, from my boss, Dr. Otterville, through Senegalese pastors, Pastor Pella, Pastor Ketch, Bishop Tudor, Pastor Elsie Obed, Marcus King, um, the churches in Canada I just came from, uh, Prophet Arnold, Bishop Dark Hubert Mills, and so many, many pastors and missionaries, and all their love to us, Bishop Michael Konkuanko, uh, we give thanks to also, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands and thank God for our own pastors, um, from our EP uh, to Pastor Njai, Reverend Shaka, myself. Thank God. Uh, while you are doing that, let's thank God for our delegates. Uh, they come every year at their own expense. They are the best delegates. I'm going to ask them to stand up. Some are seated here. Some are seated there. You can just stand up and let's really welcome them from the UK, from uh, everywhere. Please stand to your feet. Let's honor you. Uh, good Dr. Hannah, Mrs. Mensa. Wow, look at them, look at them, look at them, look at them from the UK. Wow, okay, from the UK. Thank you so much, Pastor Dillis. Um, Coco, stand up. Yeah, delegate uh, Angela and Lee, thank you so much. We love you. Um, good to have you. Eldona, Alvin, God bless you all. Uh, we are glad that you are here. And of course, to our special guest ministers. Grace, Mary, Jerry, we love you so, so much. Love you so much. Pastor James, thank you so much for what you're doing. Please remember, as I said, there's a bus to take you home. Uh, we need to share some thoughts together. We were praying here, and the Lord spoke to us and said he will visit us again. Can I hear you say amen? amen. I want to read a few scripture verses to you, and then I will speak briefly and we'll see what the Lord will do. Let's go to Genesis, the first book, and I want to start from chapter 30. Chapter 30, Apostle Selman is taking off tomorrow morning and will be here 
just at the same time Jerry came and come right into the service Friday, Saturday and Sunday as announced hallelujah hallelujah Genesis and chapter actually let's go to chapter 31 verse 10 Genesis 31 and verse 10 and it happened at the time when the flocks conceived that I lifted my eyes and I saw in a dream not physically I saw in a dream and what I saw was rams which leaped upon the flocks but they were special they were streaked, they were speckled, and they were gray spotted. Old King James will say brown. They were streaked, they were speckled, and they were gray spotted. Genesis chapter 28. Verse 10, Genesis 28, 10. I'm reading down to maybe verse, let's see how far we go. Verse 10, now Jacob went down from Beersheba, went toward Haran. And so he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. It was evening time. And so he took one of the stones of that certain place and put it on his head, or put it at his head, sorry. So he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder that was set up on the earth but its top reached to the heaven and there on that ladder were the angels of God the angels of God and they were ascending the ladder and they were descending the ladder and behold the Lord God stood above it at the top of this ladder. And he said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you are lying, I will give it to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as many as the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and in you and in your seed. All the families of this earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and I will keep you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and he said, surely the Lord God is in this place and yet I did not know it. 
And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This place is none other than the house of God and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set that stone up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. And he called... means the house of God. 20. Then Jacob made a vow saying, if God will be with me, if God will keep me in this way that I am going, if God will give me bread to eat, if God will put clothing on me, my body so that when I go, I can come back to my father's house in peace. The God that does that shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that you give me God, I will surely give a tenth back to you. Can everybody say amen? amen. Tonight I want to speak on what I've called Spirit encounters for breakthrough. Spirit encounters for breakthrough. There are two dreams that we have read. The first one we read is not the first dream in Jacob's life. The second one we read is the first. And so I'm going to journey from the first to the second and let's see what the Lord will do with us tonight. Spirit encounters for breakthrough. This journey that Jacob started was a journey because his father Isaac had called him and said to him it's time to marry you are of age. I want grandchildren. Marry, but do not marry from outside of the covenant of God's blessing over our family and our lives. As your brother Esau has done. Make sure you do not marry from the Canaanites. Look from within the household of faith. Look from within the place of covenant and marry and so Jacob embarked upon this journey in the interim Esau his brother heard what the father said and got upset and instead of repenting married more Canaanite wives so this dream number two which is where we are starting is a dream that Jacob as it were chanced upon on his journey to find a wife. He was obeying daddy and he was going to the locale or locales where he would possibly stumble upon a nice girl within covenant and marry her. It was a long journey. So he got to a particular place and evening set upon him. And he looked around and he thought, I'm going to sleep here. One of the qualitative characteristics of spirit encounter breakthrough is that you must be ready to be inconvenienced by the conventional and the convenient. Because ordinarily you will not lie down on the floor and take a stone and make for your pillow. If your head is like mine, you will have problems. And if your head is not like mine, expectations are that you ask, is there any no vacancy motel, 
hotel, is there any place within a mile that I can sleep? But sometimes the places of the inconveniences of life are the places of the beginnings of spiritual encounters for our lives. Which encounters lead us into breakthroughs. Which breakthroughs change our lives for good. That is our dream for our 31st year. That is our faith for our 31st year. That is our expectation for our 31st year. And that is our prophecy over the land of the Gambia. In the name of Jesus. Spirit encounters. So evening had come. And he found this stone amongst others. And he slept. When you sleep and I sleep. We stop. And that is most times when we allow God to begin. He slept. In his sleep, he dreamed or he dreamt. And in the dream, he saw a ladder that was set on the ground where he was. And when he lifted up his eyes in the dream the top of the ladder went into heaven. And at the top of that ladder, he could tell this was God. And God started speaking to him and told him things that God wanted to do to him, for him, by him, and through him. Albeit in a certain place of no description, nondescript, as I said to the choir, unscripted, unprepared for, unplanned, but sometimes in the ill preparation, unreadiness of man is where the Lord steps in so that he can bring a transformation that gives us the breakthrough that our hearts desire. God spoke to him and told him that I will not leave you until that which I have purposed to do happens in your life. And he woke up and it was a dream. It was like Solomon's dream. It was like Joseph's dream about not going the way they came so that Herod would not kill that baby. What we do after these dreams is crucial sometimes to the next level of our lives. He didn't joke with it. He understood it to be prophetic. He understood it to be futuristic. He understood that that was the beginning of something in his life. But, 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 this dream had nothing to do about looking for a wife. Ordinarily, it had nothing to do with the journey. But he keyed into it. He keyed into it. Tonight we read our faith declaration that said, I am getting into a realm where I want to be more conscious so that I am sold out more to God's prepared places than to my plans, my pre-plans, and my mental calculations. That is where we have come to. Because ladies and gentlemen, whether Jacob saw the ladder or not, it was there. Whether he understood the meaning of the ladder or not, it was there. Whether his eyes were open or closed in the realms of the spirit, the ladder was always there. And tonight I declare by the grace of God upon my life, there is a ladder right before you from where you are to where heaven is. But you must lift up your eyes and see it. So the breakthroughs that become yours will happen for your life. He said, behold, God, not was, God is in this certain place. And I did not know. This must be the house of God. And this spot is the gate of heaven. 
And he also made a vow to God that God, if you take me on this journey, put food on my table, put clothes on my body, take me safely and bring me back, you will be my God. Because this is a terrain I don't know. This is uncharted waters. I don't know anything about this place. But if you lead me and guide me and bring me back in peace, you will be my God. And everything that you bless me with, I will remove a portion and give unto you. So he continued the journey. In that journey, he landed at his uncle's house. Because the father had actually told him, make sure you go around Laban's place. And when he got there, his eyes stumbled upon Rachel, the younger sister. She looked so ravishingly pretty to him. And he told the father, I want to marry your daughter. And the father said, you have to walk. He said, I'll walk. And he said, name me your wages. They named the wages and he walked. He walked for seven years. Seven years added to the time when he had that dream is a long time. It's good enough time to forget that dream. After seven years, the wedding day came. Here comes the bride. They went. Honeymoon. That's why we always try to say they should uncover the bride. Here, let us see what we are marrying. Got to the room in the night and discovered it was the wrong woman. In that it was the older sister, Leah. And he said, this is not what I worked for seven years. And the uncle said, this is not how we do it in our place. You don't bury the younger first and leave the older. We don't do Cinderella here. If you want this one, you must walk another seven. He said, and the Bible describes his walking like it was like a day or so. So he walked 14 years to get what daddy sent him 14 years and some months ago. Interspersed by a dream that God told him. In those 14 years, plus another six years from the Bible's account, 20 years, Jacob worked for Laban. He tended his flocks, his sheep, his goats, whatever he had, took care of them. And the Bible says one fine day, Leah gave birth to a baby called Joseph. And she said, I'm going to name him Joseph because finally the Lord has removed reproach of affliction from me. And as soon as that boy was born, Jacob went to Laban and said, Sir, it's about time I do my own thing. It's about time I start my own. There is nothing like being your own landlord. There's nothing like having your own. That is why people fight for land. Families fight for land. People have litigation because when you have land, it's ownership. You are a lord of land. Or you are a lady of land. You have a stake in what is going on. And Laban got disturbed. And he said, name me your wages. How much bonus do you want? We can buy you a new car. We can send you on a holiday. Go and play golf. Why? Because Laban said, for I have learned by experience. And that word, ladies and gentlemen, experience translates to magic. It means juju. I have learned by conjuring that my business, my life, my enterprise has prospered since you joined me. So God, your God, has prospered my work because of your faithfulness. But in your faithfulness that brings forth my prosperity, you are still serving under me. 
you negotiated a predetermined salary with a hundred dollars increase every year from grade 7.1 to 7.2 until you are 65 you will never get what you should get the breakthrough that you want but there is an encounter that gives it did you hear what i just said there is an encounter that can give it jacob said to laban it's not salary we are not talking about salary we can keep the cars I want to own something. I want to own something. And Jacob is looking at Laban and wants to tell him everything, but there's a restriction and a restraint in his spirit. He's like, he wants to tell him, sir, you don't know. When I was coming to look for a wife, I slept on the road and I had a dream. And that dream showed me my entire future. And it looks like you've delayed my future for 20 years. Enough is enough i must rise to that point where i now do my own and prepare for my own and labor said no jacob said i gotta go and jacob had some boldness and said sir may i remind you that before i came you had few flocks you had few sheep you had few marasmic kwashioko protein energy malnutrition malnourished sheep and goats but I came and I started praying. I started talking to them. I started washing them. I started falling on the ground with them. I started making them feel good. And that which you had which was feeble has become great. But when will I prepare for my own? When Laban saw that Jacob was serious, he said to him, what do you want to do? And Jacob said, this is what we are going to do, sir. You see all your plenty sheep and goats? They are all looking good. You see these striped ones? These speckled ones or freckled ones? These spotted lambs or brown lambs? They are few. It's just the theory of natural selection. So since you have the greater bulk of the pure breed, you take your own. And let me take these few funny looking goats, sheep, and lambs and let them be mine. And any time you see yours among mine, then I have stolen from you. And Laban, in his Laban way of thinking, got very excited and thought what the word in my mouth cannot come out what an unwise boy so take the feeble ones he took them folks the breakthrough of your life is not a function of how good what you have is, it is a function of who your God is and what he can do. So he took them and Laban said to himself, I will teach this boy a lesson. And the Bible says he separated Jacob's herd from his and sent Jacob a three day walking journey's distance. If you walk three days from now, you may approach, who knows, Bansang or somewhere, maybe even further. What was the point? The point was that I am going to make it so impossible. There is no, you know, sheep are not like dogs. Dogs are very faithful. If you think your dog is harassing, you drive your dog in your car, drop your dog in Farafenye. Four days later, he's in front of your gate. They are loyal. Sheep have no loyalty to anybody. So, Labor thought that his plan of putting three days journey 
distance of walking between these two words, nothing will ever happen. And he was right. He was right. So Laban turns around and looks at all that he has and he's excited. This boy is not smart. He should have continued walking for me. What is he going to do with this feeble sheep, feeble goats, and this land? Who wants to buy these things? What Laban did not know is the dream number two we read. That one day when this same feeble, freckled, speckled, striped, spotted, brown cattle were mating, the Lord lifted up his eyes. Jehovah lifted up his eyes. Jesus lifted up his eyes and showed him something that genetics, that DNA splicing, that recombinant DNA technology, that Mendelssohn characteristic science had never ever shown anybody. Because had they shown anybody that, Laban would have been operating that formula. Tonight I come to tell you that with spirit encounters, there is a formula, there is a pathway, there is a revelation download from heaven which eye have not seen, ear have not understood. It has not entered the heart of man that God can give you, that can turn your life for breakthrough for good in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough is not just talk. It's a revelation. While they were skipping and mating and drinking, God said, let me show you something, my son. He thinks life ends by all those cattle he has. Lift up your eyes. Let me show you what we do in the heavenlies. Let me show you what happens that man does not know. I keep saying that. You know, Angela will tell you we have in our bedroom, I bought this thing called uh, Google Home. So sometimes we trigger it. Hello, Google, why is my wife? I'm sorry, I cannot help you with it. I'm, I'm still learning. Because if I don't put information on my wife on Google, Google Home cannot know. What am I saying? Google is past stored information. Google and everything in this world, as wonderful as they are, can never tell you the future and tell you the revelation of tomorrow. So God excitedly told him, just look up. And he said he dreamt. And in his dream, he saw this cattle mating. And God showed him the revelation. Can you say that word with me? Revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, comprehension is mental. Revelation is supernatural. It's spiritual. There is no empirical formula for it. Nobody on the earth can replicate what Jacob did. They can try everything designer baby to designer lambs. Splice the gene. Pump it with something and say it's going to come like that. Na, 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 na. And so when he woke up from that dream, that dream was a message to the first dream that I'm going to bless you. So it was that understanding that he had. <laughs> Can I come down? It is that understanding that he had, PJ, that he now looked at this man who was taught that once you have the majority, you are going to win. Who was taught that once you have the demographic numbers, you are going to win. But let me tell you that there is a realm of the spirit there is a realm of the Holy Ghost. There is a realm of Jesus that defies everything you have known. Because all man knows is all man has learned. And all man has learned is not all there is to know. There is a realm of power. There is a realm of the Holy Ghost. There is a realm that comes from worship. There is a realm that comes from fasting. That opens the heavens. If God did not tell Job, will Job know that there are storehouses for snow? If God did not tell man, will man know that there is anything? So God told J Jacob, let him take what he has. He thinks he's okay. I have showed you a picture. This feeble, 
cattle, they can mate. They can burn picking. Plenty, plenty. And this your little is going to become great. They look feeble now, eh? They look feeble now. Can you close your eyes and imagine what we were like in 1988? Feeble. Can you imagine what your lives were 30 years ago? Feeble. Sometimes nobody gives you a chance. Because people think that they can already predict your future. But there is a path that the vulture does not know. There is a path that the lion does not know. There is a path that has been cut out by Jehovah God for you. And that path will be released tonight in the name of Jesus. He spoke to me. And we will release that path for you tonight. So if you were there, you will see Jacob. He now went to court like bamboo tree. Hey, la camo sikapaya. He went to court like bamboo tree. And he went to buy or borrow or beg paint. White and black paint. Sometimes people can see you do things and they get very sorry for you. They think malaria has hit you. Cerebral fever. You look very crazy. For the greater bulk of you, I've told this story before. When we started this church in 1988, just five months and I was taking a team on crusade to Basse. Paid the Lebanese uh, man there on the, of his cinema. Overcharged us that Saturday is when he makes his money. I said, how much? We paid him off. So that weekend there was no cinema in Basse. But we were preaching Jesus. Before the trip, I walked to a company here, a government parastatal, to ask for a bus. And when I sat before this, I stood before this MD, you have to reverse me 30 years now, what I looked like. At least I had hair then. And the man said, um, so what is, I said, a, a gospel campaign. He looked at me, he called First Orthodox Church, I said no. Second Orthodox, I said no. Third Orthodox, I said no. He looked at me and said, are you not Forbes? I said, this is how his glasses was on me. You know, when your glasses are like that, it assumes you have wisdom and you have seen the world. When you change the two, it means that you are not seen properly. Some of you have one for dollars and one for pounds. He looked at me and said, do you think anything can happen here? Not just condescending. The man was sorry for me. I'm sure if I see him now, I will be sorry for him. Ladies and gentlemen, God showed Jacob this picture. Never before known by anybody. Look for wood. Split it in two. Paint it black and white. Put it by the drinking trough. And while they are drinking, let them be looking at what they are seeing. If I came to you and told you this is what the Lord has told me. I have two dogs, three and a half sheep, and two goats. And you come to my house, what are you doing? I say, I'm painting white and black. You see these two and a half sheep and three goats come here in two years. You will see a mighty thing. You know, people feel sorry for you. He said, you started hearing things. Indeed. So he painted. And as they were drinking water, suddenly something came upon them. And they were mating. And the offspring of their mating was exactly what God had showed him in a dream. And they began to produce and produce and produce and produce. And as if that was not enough, there was a grace. There was an unction. There was an anointing. There was a presence, a heavy presence that came upon those sheep. They became stronger and stronger and bigger and fatter and better. Meanwhile, the man who had everything that he knew all the books had taught him. All the commissions had told him. All the conferences have told him. All the libraries of congresses had told him that he is doing well. 
suddenly his own workers told him that sir have you heard what is happening he said where hey, Jacob uh, has he died did the sheep eat him or did he eat the sheep Say, sir you need to know what's happening the man has become a conglomerate who Jacob what happened those few feeble sheep yeah sir it's like you need to come and see until they tell you you will not believe what you are seeing when Laban dared to look at the thing they were so plenty and ladies and gentlemen every time the Lord blesses you and you are big the spirit of jealousy will rise up normal that is why Abimelech said get away from us for thou art mightier than us because might comes in and when might comes in hatred starts and if you don't deal with hatred jealousy comes if, when jealousy doesn't happen then total outright malice and suddenly Laban was saying no 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 how did this happen no I'm sure you touched some of this this is not no 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 what we are doing is called revelation it's a spirit encounter there is a breakthrough you want my brother there is a breakthrough you want my sister there is a breakthrough I want and if you follow just the methods of Jake, uh, of Laban you are going to get his Lebanese methods and answers but you must stop and ask the God of the universe is there not another way is there not a proper way is there not a quicker way ladies and gentlemen of this convention there was a king that had a chariot his chariot was the best it's like the beast or maybe air force one or whatever we have here at the airport that's not functioning maybe those presidential planes and everybody knew that if it is the president's or the king's it's got to be the fastest and that's fine it's mark 5 it's g5 engine until the hand of the lord came upon elijah when the hand of the lord came upon elijah he had run that chariot because there is a way there is a pathway there is spirit encounter for breakthrough if you want breakthrough there is an oil of spirit encounter that opens this conference that will come upon you in the name of jesus never look down upon yourself nobody would have told him and the formulas of god in this convention will never be replicated by anybody because they are unique to you can you clap your hands for the lord they are unique to you they are unique to you ladies and gentlemen you may call it mendelism where was mendel when jacob was receiving that dream it's like how Mongo Park discovered the Niger. As if the Niger was in there before him. Where was Mendel? It's a realm. Pastors, there is a realm. There is a realm. Christians in the Gambia, there is a realm. The nation of the Gambia, there is a realm. We can't just be copying and pasting, copying and pasting, formulae and all kinds of things that confuse us. We are not even sure what we are doing and where we are going. If we can stop and lift up our eyes to the place where help comes from, when he will part the curtains and say, Gambia, go like this. That's what we need as a country. Not advisors who don't know how to advise. There is a realm. I want a breakthrough but it's spirit encounter how else would you tell Joseph that Herod wanted to kill that baby he didn't say it but there was a dream and the angel said to him don't go that way oh. go this way to Egypt for two years and when they that want to kill this boy are dead I will tell you to come don't you want to live that kind of a life? Don't you want to live that kind of a life? That Saul thinks he's looking for lost donkeys and suddenly a prophet tells him that, look, when you go down the road, you are going to find people with wine, people with bread, and people prophesying. And when they prophesy, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. And when it comes upon you, just prophesy and do as occasions. Have. And it's happened exactly as the prophet had said. Because he looked into the spirit tonight as i begin to close and we pray there are encounters of the spirit that must make a difference for us and not just abiding word but the entire 
body of Christ, this true, serious, remnant body of Christ. That is a pathway. That is an encounter. If not, Jacob would have worked for Laban until he died. And every day, God will be saying, if only you lift up your eyes, I can show you the way out. If only you lift up your eyes, you will see the ladder. If only you lift up your eyes, you will see that they that are with us are more than they that are against us. But you must let the Spirit encounter you. Please bow your heads in prayer, if you will. You must let the Spirit encounter you. Let the Spirit encounter you. I love mentoring. I mentor people. I coach. I pastor. I shepherd. I advise. We do all that. But ladies and gentlemen, there is one who sees it all and knows it all. You will spend your life arguing with the woman at the well until spirit takes over and says to her, go and call your husband. And she says, I do not have. And Jesus said, you are right, for you have had five. And you are living with a situation in the house. And the woman dropped the pot and ran into the city and said, all my secrets have been revealed. That which I feared most and was hiding has suddenly come. I am now free. The Spirit can tell you. The Spirit of God can tell you. He told Cornelius, He can tell you. He can tell you. Because that is His path for you. Ask him tonight as we set the stage for tomorrow as the Holy Spirit will operate with Apostle Selma. Ask God, I want a spirit encounter. A spirit encounter. Remember he brought Moses into his presence and gave him dimensions, not just a picture. He gave him dimensions, he gave him colors, he gave him animal skin for the tabernacle. And then he told him the workers that must walk, Aholia Bizalia. It's a spirit encounter. If not, a Laban will block you. And the rest of your laboring life will be paid at naming wages but never coming to your own. God says he will visit us. And this visitation is strong in this house tonight. There's a sense of the breaking of chains that have held people down. There's a sense of the opening of doors that have been closed upon people. There is a sense of strength that is bursting forth from feeble lives. In the order of Ezekiel 13, 14, 15, and 16, God says, I will execute judgment in no and pour my fury upon sin and split no wide open so that yes will come forth for everyone that is in this convention and everyone that is watching spirit encounters for breakthrough spirit encounters for breakthrough the first step to that breakthrough tonight is that if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ everything I'm saying is not going to help you because that's the foundation that ladder is Jesus you want to make that decision for him because you want to come into a life of spirit encounters wherever you are seated or standing if that's you just raise your hand so I can see you so we can pray with you 
I'll give you a minute or not so we can move if that is you just do that if not so we can move you want to make that commitment you want to make that decision if your hand is up let me see it if not let me move to the next in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus second this realm this realm that supersedes the five senses and the mind is the realm of the spirit and tonight we want to release an unction upon every life that wants that folks what a joy look at the picture that you wake up in the morning and you are telling your boss or somebody like that and he's laughing because he thinks what a joke you want this feeble sheep take them you want these dead car engines take them you want just this body this is just panel beating take no 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 the thing is that you had seen a picture from heaven and in the words of Jeremiah, I watch over my word to perform it. If you want to come in that realm of spirit, which is where we are going to, tonight we are going to pray together, not very long, but very deep. If that is what you want. Because if not, ladies and gentlemen, you are walking with your mind, walking with your five senses, having very strong mental capacities, strong soulish abilities but the spirit realm is closed look at what happened on his way for a wife a dream about his future he's suffering yes he can write to the labor department he can even go to the ombudsman but he went to the god of all gods who told him don't even waste your time litigating just take this and with my presence it changes Tonight I'm going to pray for that release upon our lives so that from tonight each one of us that is serious will begin to get these encounters for breakthrough. That is how your cruise of oil will not cease. That is how five loaves of bread and two fish feed thousands. Ah. Thank you, Father. Holy Father, I pray tonight by what you sent me to do and say. And for every believer, for every person desirous of spirit encounter transformative life I stand behind this podium and I lift up my hand in the name of Jesus for what you showed me this afternoon covering every name that you called to me Father, you will draw us together from the realm of the sense and the flesh life into the realm of spirit dynamics, spirit sensitivity, and spirit revelation. I now decree by the hand of God, I now declare by the apostolic mandate of heaven over my life I now decree on account of what heaven has ratified that spirit encounters would be normal with the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I stand in strong authority and break every chain of bondage break every yoke of blockage Break every difficult situation and cause the eyes of your people to be lifted to heaven for spirit encounter from now in the name of Jesus. I open the portals of heaven where there is enough for everyone's uniqueness to show. 
Tonight, let there be divine proprietary that it is yours, patented from heaven, uncopyable, but unique to your gifting, unique to your life, unique to your calling, unique to your mandate. That is why I prophesy over you tonight that from now henceforth, you will never allow anybody to confirm and endorse your life while you are negotiating the weight of your mandate. For the weight of your mandate and the weight of your assignment comes from God. And if he gives it, he will back you. If heaven endorses you, you are endorsed. You are endorsed. You are endorsed. Spirit encounter is yours. Take it in the name of Jesus. I open the atmosphere over this land. Open it for spirit encounters. For there was a king who made a terrible mistake of touching the things that belong to God. And a hand without a humerus, without a shoulder and a body, a finger started writing on the wall. And the Bible says that the writing was specific for the king alone. So he alone saw it and the joints of his sockets or the sockets and his joints began to shake. I lift my hand over this country and I make bold to declare that any time that the church of God in the land, any time that the people called by the name of Jehovah a trouble that finger will arise and no one can cut that finger down that finger will speak where it matters but I make bold to declare that increase and growth the speckled of the church the spotted of the church the strict of the church the brown and the spotted are beginning to rise up in the name of Jesus the feeble are becoming strong. The weak are becoming mighty. The lowly are being exalted. For spirit encounter has come in the name of Jesus. And finally, I lift my hand over you all that that encounter will begin to happen. As he showed me. As he showed me. As he showed me. There are all kinds of names he told me today. But they will come during this weekend. Don't worry. They will come. They will come. The Ismailers, the Judiths, the one he told me, they will come. They will come. And even if you're here, come again tomorrow. Mahikahiyama Sandeleki. The Lord showed me somebody, they, they nickname him actor. They call you actor. You may not be here tonight or you are here. But just for you to know that the Lord knows you. That's your nickname. They call you actor. actor. I don't know whether you joke a lot. But there's something the Lord has for you. Stay tuned from here to Sunday. And see what he has to do. There's somebody also Bernadette or Bernadette. Bernadette, I don't know who those people are. He just showed me all those people. Because when the spirit realm opens, ladies and gentlemen, all kinds of things can happen. You know, it's possible for the Holy Spirit to show me that tonight you wanted to wear one gold chain, you wore it and you took it out and you wore the second gold chain. And you're here tonight. When the portals of heaven open, it is like that. It is like that. Let the blessing of God fall upon everyone. Let spirit encounter follow you. Let spirit encounter follow us. Let spirit encounter go with us. So that it will be the beginnings of a breakthrough. You will break through by a spirit encounter. After whatever happened there, we hardly heard about Laban again. It was all Jacob. And Jacob. 
and his things were so big that when he was about to meet his brother he was afraid he divided them into groups that's how big they have become and that's how big we will become here in the name of Jesus I'm ending with this one statement then we'll take our offering please when you start getting spirit encounters and you wake up right 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 if you can't write or you have a dictaphone record it for your phones record it on your phone it will look so silly but I'm so glad Jacob knew that this was God as you can paint wood and sheep and goat can look at it and they can mate and exactly what they see is what they produce exactly what they look at is what they produce then there is a God in heaven Lift up your hands and give him thanks. Give him thanks. And if you've given him thanks, why don't you put your hands together and just thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him. Spirit encounter, spirit encounter. Spirit encounter. Spirit encounter. Amen. The choir will bless us, I think. Uh, with one song and let's take our convention offering as we normally do every year um, tomorrow night Apostle Semba will be here he's living in the morning he's here speaking um, tomorrow night from the airport straight here tomorrow night Saturday night and Sunday night don't miss any of the nights but this is how the Lord wanted us to start and we are so great you notice how the Lord is doing it every worship group or person comes here and just brings us to another level of the goodness of the Lord. So participate in the worship and see what the Lord will do. There's a bus waiting outside. It's a very big bus. It will take us all and you can share some fellowship. We'll see you tomorrow. But let's give our offering so we can be blessed. Choir. session thank you for the heavy presence of your grace thank you for the unction for spirit encounters thank you for what will happen in our lives lord we commit 
uh, Apostle Selman's journey tomorrow into your house. Bring him safely. Thank you for bringing Jerry. Thank you for all our delegates who have come. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, take everybody safely in your blessing and may spirit encounter be a reality in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shalom. See you tomorrow at 6. God bless you. Okay.